How you doing guys today? Uh, we're at the uh, uh, at the ninth right here. Uh, we're looking at chapter seven. Chapter seven is involved in environmental and hazardous waste. Uh, stemming off from what we did on uh, six, just remember and understand that safety, of course, is going to be an ongoing thing uh, in everything you do in the automotive industry, uh, primarily because of the fact that you can't get hurt um, while engaging in any type of automotive repair. So just kind of keep that in mind. Uh, always double check yourself. And if you're unsure of uh, any type of particular task, always ask questions. And in this particular class, as well as the other classes, um, if, there, if you're like 90% or 95% uh, in the right way, if you know that you have to do a certain task a certain way, um, that means you're not fully at 100%. Uh, everything has got to be at 100% when you're working on a car. You can't work on a car at 90% or 95 or 80. Uh, that's only for tests and quizzes. Uh, and exams, but as far as uh, car repair, uh, we got to be spot on at 110%. Uh, the 10% comes from rechecking your work after you do it right. So just double check yourself when you're doing that. Um, that's what we try to instill to our students in the automotive department, because uh, you're going to be required to do it out there anyway. Okay, You can't work on a customer's car and have a paying customer uh, pay for a repair that was only done at 90%, which there are other facilities that uh, some people do that but uh, you know we're, we're not uh, we're a little bit better than that so we'd like to try and strive for 110 percent all the time okay uh, chapter seven I guess uh, we're looking at environmental and hazards uh, understand that you know with the waste products you know we have uh, certain areas out there in the uh, back of the shop and back of the um, the tool room area where when we get a chance to go out there into the lab uh, as soon as I get the word in well, we're gonna cover those areas that I told you that were in asterisk format in your safety exam. So just kind of keep that in mind, okay? Uh, and we'll show you where to uh, properly dispose of the waste materials in the back. Uh, PPE, of course, is uh, utmost and foremost important. Again, we're wearing safety gloves, uh, mechanics nitro gloves, uh, safety glasses. And uh, at this point, you know, we will be wearing a mask just to prevent uh, the COVID-19 uh, spread. Uh, Occupational Safety and, and Health Act, of course, that was incorporated in 1970 by the government. And it was basically a, a uh, enactment to provide a safe and healthful working conditions for all employees. Uh, typically, when you go into a dealership uh, and some other fleet places, they make you watch a video if you're hired. And at that point, what's gonna happen there is uh, you'll wind up taking a safety test when you work for them. And that's number one for your awareness and number two, uh, protection uh, for the uh, dealership or place of business, knowing that if you come into the shop and you perform an unsafe act or not doing things correctly, uh, you're, you become liable and not the place of business because of the fact that you were trained on it, okay? Uh, EPA, of course, another environmental protection agency, uh, published the standards and regulations for uh, hazardous materials, corrosive materials, reactive materials, ignitable type of materials that are out there. Uh, I'm looking on page 48 uh, in your book. And like I said, some of the stuff is in my PowerPoint. Um, when you get a chance to get your book, uh, we'll, we'll move on forward from here. But that's why we're doing the lectures uh, online right here. When you get a chance and have an opportunity to go back and look at what we're covering in the book. Uh, the right to know laws. It's something that we look at and we have that displayed with our MSDS sheets about down at the lab area. And basically it's the, uh, it states that employees have the right to know what kind of materials that they're working around uh, and the different types of uh, uh, materials that we use out there, uh, cleaning materials, solvents, uh, brake cleaning, carburetor cleaning, uh, battery acid detector and cleaner, um, various types of uh, chemicals uh, that you need to be aware of. And there are on the MSDS sheets, material safety data sheets, uh, those are uh, first aid procedures on what to do in case you either ingest it, inhale it, or it gets in contact with your eyes. You know, there's first aid procedures on what to do from that. Um, so kind of keep that in mind. The material safety data sheets, again, every shop in, in, is required to have material safety data sheets, not only shops, but uh, like Walmart, uh, Target, 
um, when you go get your hair done at a salon, you know, they're required, uh, pretty much everybody that has a place of business required to have some type of MSDS sheets. Uh, so the other thing that we have, of course, is the, uh, uh, the Clean Air Act. And that's basically coming from the stemming of a refrigeration system, uh, Title, Title VI, Section 609. I'm looking at page 49 in the book. Uh, where it talks about the re refrigerants, how they need to be recovered and recycled and not left out to the atmosphere. Uh, majority of our, our depletion of our ozone layers coming from uh, CFCs, uh, and we're getting that emitted from Freon, as we have done in the past. Uh, and that's why we're, you know, the, the EPA and the government is, uh, with the Clean Air Act, striving to in ensure that all shops are, are recovering and recycling the uh, refrigerant when it comes out the vehicle instead of open it up to the atmosphere. Okay. Uh, the other thing that we look at, of course, is asbestos materials, which is a hazard material. Uh, we see asbestos a lot, and we saw them a lot previously on vehicles with brakes, uh, with uh, transmission clutch discs. Uh, houses, some uh, some houses have asbestos materials insulation. Uh, we we started to slowly see that decline and uh, going leading towards semi-metallic material now, but. Uh, a long exposure to asbestos uh, means that you can accumulate that and have a symptom called asbestosis, which is uh, uh, asbestos material that gets in collected with your lungs and causes uh, uh, breathing failures, uh, issues, coughing, un unforeseen and uncontrollable coughing, uh, maybe a hoarseness in, in speech. So there's been many tests that have uh, taken place over the amount of years, you know, 20, 20 to 30, 40 years down the road, uh, that's when uh, symptoms start to come up and reappear for you on that. So um, more than likely you have to be uh, taken to the hospital, go to the doctor and get checked out and uh, you know, see what's going on with that and see what kind of treatment they now have available for you. But uh, you know, certainly we wanna take care of that. You know, in the brake system, uh, we use a wet collection system that's on page 50 of the figure 7-2. It shows uh, the wet collection system uh, used on, uh, looks like drum brakes on this one here. Uh, you know, guys used to blow, get the air blow gun and blow off all that brake dust. And the problem with that is it collects up in the air and it stays in the air for a good long period of time. So anybody walking around, um, you know, a 10 foot radius is gonna be in contact with it. You're gonna inhale it in. And that's how it gets involved in, in uh, collecting into your lungs when you breathe. So, um, but there are guidelines. There's a HEPA vacuum, which stands for uh, high efficiency particulate air. It's a vacuum enclosure method that goes over the brakes. Uh, and it's like a big vacuum cleaner and it's uh, filtered through a bag. Uh, the bag is supposed to be, once, a, once completing the brake job, for instance, in brakes, is designed to go ahead and make sure that we have that collected up and it gets put into another like 55 gallon drum where it gets disposed of properly. So, uh, Breeze brake fluid, use oil. Uh, those are some of the things, you know, all the fluids that we have on, on our vehicles, uh, they have to be disposed of as we change them properly. So we have to have a collection type system to do that. Uh, 55 gallon drums is normally what we can use to put that in. I know with the shop over there, you know, you can intermix uh, brake fluid and um, use oil. However, the book doesn't, uh, it says not to do that, but uh, because of filtration systems, from the like safety clean who comes up and uh, uh, siphons out our 55 gallon drum barrels when they're full. There's a separation unit within the, the big truck that separates the, the brake fluid and the, and the oil. And if for whatever reason, mistakenly, somebody puts antifreeze mixed up with it, uh, which they're not supposed to, uh, there's a separation for that as well. But uh, we typically will have a 55 gallon drum container for antifreeze also. Uh, the storage of used oil uh, should be in a container. If you're doing any work at the house, make sure you're taking it over to one of your local auto parts uh, places as they will be able to take that for you. Uh, the filters now, you, what you have to do on that is puncture several holes around the area of the filter and let it sit uh, drip dry over about 24 hours. Uh, and you can put it like in a regular grocery bag and put it in your trash can now. Uh, before you weren't able to do that, you had to actually take it to a place and uh, of course they're going to charge you for that for a disposal fee but uh, but now the the uh the government uh 
said now that the customers can do that themselves, but you need to make sure you drain it for 24 hour period, uh, poking several holes all over the filter uh, so it can drain efficiently and then uh, discard it in the trash can with a some type of like a Walmart bag, uh, double bag it uh, or put it in a trash bag. Uh, solvents, we see solvents out there. We've got NAPTA solutions for parts cleaning that we have. There's also biodegradable solutions that we could use that they sell now, which is environmental free. Uh, and it does a great job on cleaning parts. Uh, the only problem with, with the, any type of solvent, especially the NAPTA solution is, you know, uh, it's got a, 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 a unpleasant odor that can cause uh, dizziness and headaches. Um, uh, lack of coordination, some nausea. Uh, anytime you, you, you're around that area, you need to make sure that you're in a well-ventilated area, okay? So if you need to take a break, take a break from cleaning certain parts. Uh, wash your hands frequently, you know, uh, just like they've been saying for uh, COVID-19, but this should have been happening like a long time ago anyway. In, in this field, we wash our hands, uh, you know, 30, 40 times a day throughout the day uh, during the eight hour work week. So, um, just make sure we're washing our hands frequently, okay? Uh, the solvents will be picked up in, uh, by your local uh, like safety clean product uh, uh, that will come by and, and siphon up the used uh, chemicals. And uh, they also do uh, have another company that they'll come up and, and take the filters, what are the oil filters, the, the air filters. The, now the air filters can be put in a trash can, but like uh, transmission filters uh, of that nature, uh, they need to be actually put in the container, okay, for uh, recycling. Uh, lead acid batteries, of course, on lead acid batteries, uh, batteries need to be taken over uh, and and taken to a, like an auto parts store area where they can uh, dispose of the battery completely and safely without any external leakage of acid. You never want to leave a battery in your garage stored in there because if it cracks for whatever reason, uh, you're going to have acid buildup coming out all over the place and it'll make a big mess and it becomes now an environmental issue. Okay. Uh, fuel safety and storage. Same thing for that. Uh, anytime we're dealing with fuel, we got to change out the fuel filter. We got to change out uh, the fuel pump in a gas tank, which has fuel in it. We need to make sure that the, the fuel gets, uh, uh, not thrown out in the yard, not thrown out somewhere like that, but uh, put in the container and taken over to a facility, uh, more than likely a shop somewhere where they do have a 55 gallon drum for slop gas, okay? Because you gotta have that available. Uh, of course, diluting it with the water, which would make it uh, a lot better uh, as far as the ignitable uh, ability concern, uh, be a good idea to put some water into it because water and fuel don't mix that good. Um, so kind of make sure that we're, we're doing that. Uh, airbag handling and used tires. Uh, typically, we really won't worry too much about airbag handling other than at body shops and dealerships, uh, unless you're doing airbag uh, deployment uh, procedures. You know, there is a procedure for doing that and handling uh, deployed airbags that they be put in a container and uh, sent out for recycling. Uh, used tires, same thing for that. Uh, these tires should be sent over to like a, a tire place like Discount Tire Company or any other uh, tire company out there um, that uh, that will accept used tires because they become an environment, environmental issue, especially when they're exposed to a lot of heat uh, or if somebody decides to put, uh, you know, put a fire on it for whatever reason, it, it, it's a, it emits a chemical out there that uh, is very harmful. So uh, just kind of keep in mind, if you have used, used tires around, like say at your house, uh, make sure you take it to some kind of tire place for that to get it disposed of properly. They're gonna charge you a disposal fee of about maybe two or three bucks for that. But uh, that way you don't have to worry about any type of environmental issues. Uh, air conditioning, again, uh, re with regard to refrigeration oil, uh, same thing for that when you have to do major AC repairs uh, there should be a container on, on the bottom of page 54, figure 7-9, that shows the uh, AC oil only. That's typically what we'll get up for that because there is uh, uh, the pad goal that we see on a lot of R134A systems that needs to be uh, uh, properly disposed of. So when you're doing that, make sure you've got to re replace the compressor. If you don't take the compressor off and just throw it away because we have oil in the compressor. We have to get rid of it properly and dispose of the oil properly. Okay, um, 
so we've got seven we've got chapter one that we're going to be covering next by tomorrow uh and hopefully we got a chance to get going on that safety test and the department policies uh, i will again come in tomorrow and look at chapter one uh we're going to be finished with this guy by the end of this week and then uh you're going to have your module one quiz already so uh i'll be posting that up for you guys uh soon um so in the meantime you guys be safe and be careful out there and we'll talk to you by tomorrow take care bye